A day at the freshman campus of Kingwood High School near Houston is like a day at most modern high schools. Students balance schoolwork and socializing, cope with cliques and peer pressure, and consider their futures. All the while, teachers face the daily challenge of keeping their coursework relevant and of making learning interesting to kids with plenty of other things on their minds. We have living stuff in there. We also have to have what? Non-living. Bringing okay. studies alive in a classroom can be difficult, even when studying life itself. What else? Biology textbooks and pickled specimens in jars can't always do the trick. You're going to be opening up and taking a look at your ecosystems. For eager young minds and sleepy teenagers, something more hands-on is often the key to sparking an interest in learning. I think I got one. Just ask biology teacher Mike Furry. That's just muck floating around in there. I've been teaching here for 13 years, and you know, teaching biology is fun. It's like a hobby. It all depends upon the teacher and how they can relate to the students and how they can bring the excitement into the classroom. And for me, it's bringing all the reptiles and amphibians. Mike keeps his classes exciting by keeping a classroom zoo. You got it. The students help care for exotic frogs, a boa constrictor, and more. Come on. <laughs> In the back, we do have the resident colony of the Madagascar hissing roaches. They are big, interesting bugs, and I still keep them just to get um, a reaction from the kids. Then we've got uh, the salamander. I bought two of those things at a bait shop, but that one has just developed into a nice, uh, friendly critter to keep in the classroom. And then in that next tank is a critter that I inherited. That's what you call a three-toed amphiuma. It's got to be at least 24 years old. And uh, who knows how long that thing is going to live. The classroom also hosts a few guests from the Gulf of Mexico. The aquarium was donated to the school. I have a fascination with what's in the ocean. And uh, where we live here in the Houston area, uh, we have a grand opportunity to go down there and collect stuff and bring it up. It's very inexpensive to do. It just takes a little time, and, and that's it. So let's pile in. Okay. So one weekend every fall, while he could be enjoying a day off, Mike rounds up some vehicles, parents and colleagues, and takes a group of students to Galveston Island State Park for some real-world biology. Can't learn it all from textbook, can't learn it all from computer software. My strategy is let the kids see it, let the kids participate, let the kids do it. At the state park, students get a chance to get their feet wet, completely wet as marine biologists for a day. I've had a couple of students in the past make career decisions, you know, decide what they would like to study. Who's going to be a marine biologist? Do they want to do something with science or not? You know, because they get a real exposure to that in here. Um, this one's a male because you see it's got this long, narrow point. You know, a couple of kids have never been exposed to any saltwater organism. They didn't realize that when they get into the water that all these things are swimming around in the water. And uh, eyes are opening up and look at all the different types of crabs, look at all these different types of jellyfish, you know, look at these different types of fish that are there. Silver sides. You catch like a puffer or fish or something for the first time, they've never seen it, they really get excited, really light up. Uh, some of the pipe fish sometimes, or uh, anchovies occasionally, you get a, a, a big stir from, from those a lot of times. There's also anchovies up there um, that we caught. The hermit crab will. A park ranger guides the class in catching and identifying a living library of sea life and lets the class know what's okay to take with them at the end of their day. We do get some small trout occasionally and, and redfish and stuff, which uh, all have length limits because they are game fish. Some do better than in tanks and aquariums, and some do better um, just being let go real quick. Those people in the state parks, they've got the education, they know the environment, they know the critters, they know the rules. And Hans down there at Galveston Island State Park has just been invaluable. We started out with eight fish. Total. Back at school, the students left. maintain a saltwater aquarium full of living reminders of their trip to the beach, to the which crab. they continue to learn from for the rest of the year. I always take a quick look at it, and I found uh, one fish in the clutches of one of the crabs. The kids that have been on the field trips always gather around the aquarium and take a look and see how things are doing. And of course, when they gather around, then other students in the classroom gather around. Part of the prey-predator relationship. Though it is unusual for teachers to use state parks as lending libraries, all over Texas, educators have discovered 
that their local state parks make excellent science labs. Are we all in our group? Which way do we go? Are there jaguars? We've got a third grade outdoor science program that goes on here, and it's literally amazing because a lot of the children have, have never been in the woods. See this plant? Just down the bank, it's like all these little green fingers. It's kind of a fan. On your ride back to the school, you won't see any dwarf palmettos, but if you look right now, you can probably see 10 or 20 of them. For students from urban areas, a field trip to a state park or a state natural area may be their first real chance to be immersed in nature. They're asked to observe what they see around them Here's a couple of and to get the feeling of things. So that you can make rubbing? Impact. That's the beauty of bringing the kids to a park. Oh, I see a tadpole. They actually get to come out here and see and feel and touch. And they get to observe nature right here in real life. It's here for them. Further west, San Angelo State Park hosts students of all ages. We have school groups, and it's anything from kindergartners to through high school kids that come out. Some groups come to study the herd of bison or learn about native plants or animals. You see, it's got little spines all over it, and that's part of its protection. Pat Bales prepares these kids to step back in time. Well, in reality, these are not dinosaur tracks. However, they're older than the dinosaurs. It's kind of neat to think that we're going to be walking where these animals walked at one time. We have uh, the largest set okay, of prehistoric Permian vertebrate animal tracks in the world right here in the park that predate the dinosaurs about 90 million years. Okay, some of these really stand out, like this big one right here. You can actually see the toe prints. We study dinosaurs in second grade science, but then they get to come out here and see it. Tracks of ancient animals. They get a taste of reality out here. Some of these kids don't see anything but four walls of a classroom and four, four walls of a home. Get them out in the country. Let them see nature. Let them live nature for a while. What greater classroom can you have than you know, right out here in San Angelo State Park. Back at Kingwood High School, as summer approaches, Mike Furry and a few students schedule one more visit to Galveston Island State Park. Not to add to the aquarium, but to return their living specimens to the Gulf. There's nobody in here to maintain these aquariums during the summer. And so the animal is basically our guest for the school year, and then, then we return it back to the ocean. Don't try this at home. The release of non-native or diseased aquatic organisms can be disastrous to native ones. But Mike knows this and has their best interest in mind. Let's head to the beach. I always hoped that we would take the equal number of animals back, but, you know, some things get eaten. <laughs> Prey and predator relationship, you know, kids learn it real quick. All right, let's set everything down right here. Pull off the shoes and socks. Okay, guys, why don't we decide what we're going to release first? The field trips that I take, and I would go to these places and look and see, yeah, even go. if I wasn't teaching. Pour most of it out. Right. When the kids can do something like that and have yeah, fun, here he, like, comes. here he comes out. I remember it. Is he in there? Yep. Yeah. All right, let's walk out there and turn him loose. Today, a few fish and crabs return to the Gulf. But Mike Furry will return next year to catch a few again and to introduce a new group of students to the living classroom just down the road at their local state park. Maybe we'll catch you next year.